welcome to this week's YouTube video. I forgot to make me cup of tea. It's also lovely and sunny now, but literally 20 minutes ago it was lashing and I was like, please get sunny because I hate filming a video when it's dark. So the, the stars have aligned, let's make tea and then we'll get into the topic at hand. Sometimes I just like the comfort of having a warm drink in my hands when I'm having the chats with you. So back in springtime, I did a couple of kitchen budget upgrades and I wanted to check in with you because some of them worked and they're holding up well and some of them not so well. <laughs> so if you followed along, um, a couple of you guys are like, please give us like an update down the line. So I'm gonna give you, I think it's like a six month update, could we say six months? So any of the DIY bits that I done during spring are going to give you a little update on how they've lasted. So if you are doing some budget kitchen makeovers, I hope you get some inspiration. So let's start with a slightly negative. So one that absolutely didn't work and that was the peel and stick tiles in my little laundry nook. Let's have a look at how the laundry look, look. The laundry nook is looking. Now, so back in spring, I changed up the wood top because the one I had was buckling and I decorated the back with some peel and stick tiles. The wood has held up perfectly, so using the thicker wood on top of the washing machine, that hasn't buckled, so that's perfect. So lesson learned thicker wood and then the stickers that I use on the back it could have been because I was sticking it they were like a peel and stick tile and I stuck it to like a plaster wall that was painted now maybe if I was to stick it to tile it would have better adhesion but unfortunately the tiles were a no they lasted about a week and a half I think and they literally just peeled and I would like stick them back on <laughs> when I would like be doing my laundry or whatever and I'd push the storage boxes but they were a big fat no but here's how that corner is looking now. So I managed to keep it relatively clean up here it's just Lou Rolls extra like bits for the house Hoover and the new addition of Guinness bananas and a potato <laughs> let's just edit that out I didn't clean here so I made the curtain that went across the washing machine and this is perfect. Haven't had any problems with the DIY curtain. I will link to all of the videos if you wanna check out the full length videos on how I made the curtain. This wood is perfect. So I used a thicker wood because I had a thinner MDF shelf when I originally did this and I had buckled, but as you can see, nice, straight, solid storage boxes, grand. Um, I could probably, there's an empty box there um, and then the addition of some Guinness. I actually don't like cans of Guinness. I prefer a large bottle and I keep meaning to drop these up to my pal's house because they're actually, I didn't realise that a can of Guinness goes off. Sorry, slightly off topic. But these are actually almost out of date. Oh, best before. I don't know, I thought I saw a best before. But... Yes, that's how it's looking now. And there was peel and stick stickers on the back and they only lasted about a week. But everything else, like the hooks for my clothes pegs, the hook for, you know, my little dustpan and brush and everything else, I haven't had any issues with that. So overall, the laundry nook was a success except for the peel and stick tiles. Now, when it comes to tiles, a popular thing people do is to paint them. And I have some square tiles behind me and this scary little tool. I stuck some vinyl to the tiles, which you can see here. We can focus in there. And a couple of you guys wanted an update because you wanted to try it, but you were unsure how with the steam of pots and stuff like that, that they would last. Now, cause it's only been maybe five, six months, it's probably too early to tell, but this has been a success. However, however, I, don't really like and this is why vinyl is better than painting tiles so if you paint a tile it's going to be really hard and messy to remove the paint off a tile so even if you did a stencil you're going to have to sand the back you're going to scratch the tile underneath you really have to sorry you really have to commit to the design whereas the vinyl you can remove it and i have left this up but 
I don't, I think I'm going to remove the vinyl from the backsplash because I don't think I like the design anymore. I think if I was to do it again, I'd maybe do like a dainty kind of floral pattern. Um, I have mentioned that I would like to retile behind here, but I just don't have the budget for that at the moment. So I thought I would experiment with the vinyl, but I can report that the Cricut vinyl on the tiles has withstanded to the steam from pots. And I'm not a major baker, cook or anything like that, but I always boil an owl egg and an owl spud. So I have tested it for the past while. If you want, I can leave them maybe for winter and see how it gets on. I feel like I cook more on the stove in winter, like soups and things like that. Anyway, vinyl on the tiles for a budget tile makeover was a thumbs up. So the next one, which is my absolute favorite, and it's a big thumbs up, is getting the Ikea countertops. So this is was higher on the budget end, as in it cost me the most to change, but it's one thing that people have noticed straight away when friends and family come into my kitchen, they're like, what did you get done? And it was literally changing the countertop to a white one. So flashback to my old one, which was a brown one. It was here from when I moved in. I had like damage in certain corners and it was like a laminate. So I went for like a budget Ikea white laminate because I don't, like I didn't want to spend on getting a quartz or a marble because I think I said in like the video where I was changing the counter that the possibility of me wanting to reconfigure the kitchen down the line is high. So I didn't want to get slabs of quartz and marble and then in five years time I may reconfigure, you know, the kitchen and the layout and stuff. In terms of the upkeep, um, there's always a tea stain <laughs> on my counter. There's always mucky paw prints from Blondie as well. And then my niece and nephew like to sometimes sit on the counter and have the chats at me. Super easy to keep clean. I don't use any harsh chemical cleaners. Um, anytime you see me with the brown sp spray bottle, it's normally like a vinegar water solution or a dish soap water solution to wipe it down. I sometimes bleach it. Very easy to keep clean. I've dropped things on it as well and I haven't dented it. So if you are looking for Big impact on a budget. Changing to the lighter countertop has been the thing that like even on a dark day, I'm all about the light, bright, airy kitchen because especially coming into autumn and winter, the days can be quite dull in Ireland, even on a gray day. That's why I like the kitchen to feel bright and airy, airy and I don't have dark colors. So the white countertop, yes. The best thing I've probably spent in the kitchen and it was well worth it. On the subject of Ikea, I did change the tap as well and um, I got a workman to do the countertop for me because it's above my skill set and there was a risk of cracking the sink. I got this sink like a good couple of years ago. Um, I used to have like a silver, good old silver metal sink. Um, so the white one made it very cottagey but there was a risk of cracking this and the workman thankfully got the old laminate counter off without cracking this and I was able to keep this but I swapped out my tap because my old one was wobbly <laughs> and I have like a gold little inset that I've changed. I was worried about this um, getting rusty and tarnished. It's obviously kind of too early to tell. It's only been like six months but I haven't had any issues with them and it's easy to keep clean. Again, I just use my kind of solution that I make my homemade cleaner and it's grand. Absolutely love it. No issues with like drippy taps or anything, but it is only newly installed. So, love that. Also the gold hardware, love them. No issues. Nice, gives it a nice expensive touch, <laughs> but they weren't expensive. <laughs> now, <laughs> let's talk about the color. If you followed me in spring, you would know that I painted the cabinets a million times, couldn't get the shade right. I still don't think the shade of colour is right. However, all throughout summer, I loved how bright the kitchen was. So if you remember, I had my kitchen painted like a pink shade, which was really fun, but it was a little bit 
it darkened the room and a couple of years back my original colour I painted when the kitchen was brown was a lovely sage green and I wanted to go for that lovely greyish colour <laughs> but it's actually harder to get that greyish beigey colour. I do think the cabinet colour that I have behind me is Benjamin Moore Pale Oak. I have a cabinet painted in the other room and it looks way warmer. Um, this tone changes throughout the day. When it's sunny it looks warm but now it's getting a little bit dull. There's like a rain shower coming and it looks very grey toned. I think it's too blue toned however I'm not going to change it again <laughs> maybe next year because I have cabinet painting fatigue and I also think it's a bit wasteful on the paint. It doesn't offend me like it's grand but I would like it a shade warmer and I think if you watch I call her Studio McGee, that's not her name. But you know the thing on Netflix? Studio McGee I think is her business name. What's her first name? You know what I'm on about though. Her kitchen, her personal one, has a lovely warm beigey colour. And I think with the white counter, I would just like this maybe a shade warmer. Um, it's for, I think it's hard to get the perfect greyish. In terms of painted cabinets, how they hold up, 10 out of 10, highly recommend it. No chips, no issues. Again, paw prints, my niece and nephew, there's always tea spills on it. Very easy to keep clean. Another thing as well, I feel like my kitchen always looks cleaner now with having the lighter countertop because I have clean it. You do see more dirt more easily, but it means I clean it more often. If I don't see the dirt, I won't clean it. Painting the kitchen cabinets. We'll give that an eight out of 10. I still think I have the color wrong, but it fatigued me. We, we, we got, we've got paint colour choice fatigue <laughs> still. <laughs> and then last but not least, I did a faux panelling. Again, I had the colour wrong. <laughs> so in January, don't paint in January. There's a lesson learned. Um, I put this lovely warm colour on the walls, but it clashed with the cabinet colour. So I ended up doing this lovely half, like I did a little bit of dado rail and I had painted that's pale oak on the walls there as well but it looks different to the camera colours but I did a faux panelling effect with a marker back in January and a couple of you guys were like why didn't you put it back on this wall to get that faux effect and actually when I painted this just with the solid colour I liked it like I could go in with a marker and do the lines. I also had no issue with painting over the marker. A couple of people were saying oh it will bleed through. It actually didn't and I didn't use an undercoat. I just put the paint over and you can't see the marker underneath. I used a sharpie. So I didn't put the panelling faux stripes back on because I thought it would be too fussy and when you look, hang on, so I have the two-tone kind of was, as you can see, it's getting darker now because there's, there's going to be a shower. But when I come into the like hallway, like my office is in here, don't mind the mess. And then I have a bedroom and I just thought it would be a bit too fussy, maybe. And yeah, you can see the backsplash there. I do want to take off the tiles and I think, yeah, I think the design I got wrong. But yeah, I thought it would be too fussy to put the stripe back on, but you can absolutely, the, the DIY itself is a win. I just didn't put it back on because I thought it might be too fussy. Um, but yeah. So if you are like me and you would love to get things done in the house, but I feel like a lot of people, I am putting my pennies aside. So any spare cash, I'm just saving it. And I'm being a bit more prudent just because <laughs> who knows how much the gas bill is going to be this winter but if you still want to do something in your house I highly recommend if you have a small budget first of all painting the cabinets is the base impact using what you already have I will link to the videos where I painted them if you want to get more info on that but prep prime and paint paint your cabinets changing the hardware big impact changing taps 
I know you might need to maybe get a plumber or something, so factor in that cost. But those little details can make a big difference. And then your countertop. I, I did look online to see if I could get, I had a funny measurement. Um, you can buy countertops straight from DIY shops, um, but my measurements were slightly off. I would have had to stick two together, so I got a custom size made from Ikea, which was slightly bit more expensive, but we're still talking a couple of hundred versus a couple of thousand if you're getting quartz. So there is ways you can kind of get some things a little bit cheaper. And then, oh, I never mentioned my table, but my table's been on the go for for years now, my OGs will remember, I got this table for 50 euro and the four chairs off adverts, but back in, I think it was winter time as well, I resealed the top with a hard wax oil and it has been nice and hard wearing and um, because sometimes I like to do a bit of DIY on my kitchen table, which is, that's not good. <laughs> So sometimes I get things on the table that I shouldn't. Um, so the hard wax oil and that, I'll link to that video if you want to check it out. So that's where you can have your dream Pinterest kitchen, but on a budget. I do have a small DIY that I want to do. Might do it next week's video the week after. I need to get some supplies for it. I have a little niche over there that I feel like I could do a mini, a mini pantry, like a wall shelf one, but I need to see if my idea can can be done. I need to make sure I can still open the fridge door, but I have an idea for over there. Let me know if you have done something budget that has been a big impact in your kitchen. You can share with the people below, give them ideas. What hasn't worked for you? Have you tried the peel and stick tiles as well and have they just slid off the wall? Or have you tried ones that have worked? Obviously not all of them are going to be crap like the ones I used. Let me know in the comment section. I think when it comes to my kitchen now, maybe a tiling project over winter. I'd love to change up the tiles, but again, they don't offend me. But I would love to do something where I took down a wall and made this one big um, like kitchen slash living space with storage and a lovely opened double French door but that is definitely five years plus <laughs> when it comes to you know the budget. Kind of hoping prices come down for if you are holding off and doing big reno works but still want some impact, I hope that you got some inspiration from this video. Again, I'll pop all the links to the longer length videos if you want to check them out. If you're new to my channel, hit the subscribe button. And for my regulars, I'll see you in the next one.